it's Janet from the Ed and Janet Show. Ed's behind the camera, of course, where he belongs, because that's what he does. And we're here today with Bill, uh, the Geritol Gardener. And actually, Bill, um, Ed taped you seven years ago. And you can still see that on Ed's YouTube channel. And my son Mitch was filming that day, so that's kind of fun. So uh, you're a fabulous garden. You're really known for that here. And I know you're friends with a lot of the people we've filmed already. And uh, we'd love to hear about your garden and how you do things, Bill. What would you like to start with? Would you like to tell us about your raspberries? Sure. Great. It's a um, fall gold raspberry. It's, uh, it's probably uh, one of the uh, sweetest of all raspberries. Um, you can double crop it, two crop per year, which is good. And how do you do that? And do you cut out the, the old canes or something? Or? These here that you see here were last year's uh, stalks. Uh -huh. uh, this is this year's new stock, new right. wood, and it fruits down to uh, 12 to 14 inches. T this year? This year, this okay. fall. Wow, okay. So you cut it off and you leave it. And then next year in June, this is what you have, it'll fruit all the way down to the bottom. Oh, I see. Okay. So you have two crops. Wow, awesome. Here. Lovely berry. Beautiful. And what are these over here? These are Marion berry. Marion berry. Yeah. It's probably one of the uh, best culinary berries uh, that, is, that, is, that is available here. Um, sauces, pies. Jams, jellies. If you ever travel to Washington State or Oregon, where this Oregon where it was uh, developed, you'll see nothing but Marion berries. Wow, really? Yeah, lovely wow. berry. I see you got some asparagus here. Please tell me, I've just put a bed in this year, yes. and uh, I won't kill that because that's not a asparagus beetle. But do you have problems with the asparagus beetles? Uh, sometimes you see it on there. It, it doesn't seem to do too much damage, so I, I don't bother with you it too much. You don't worry too much? That's good to know. Yes, it's, it's pretty well a, a self-governing uh, self uh, item. Uh, I don't really do too much to the soil. Uh, you can plant it and, and you can't harvest it until after about three years. Then after three years, you can harvest the bigger shoots. And once they get smaller like this, you leave them grow. You don't cut them to feed the soil. And um, sometimes you can get a uh, crop right through to the later in the year, but uh, generally it, it's early. And I don't even know this yet, but what do you do in the winter? Do you chop it back yes. in the fall? This will all turn orange and yellow. Okay. And you just cut them right cut off at the bottom. Yeah. Leave it to yeah. the spring. Leave it for next year. Ah. Hey, Bill, is, is it important when you harvest asparagus to use a knife and cut it below ground level or not? Some people do. I don't bother doing that, but a lot of people do. Hmm. And uh, uh, they say there's, uh, there's um, more uh, nutrition comes from that. But I don't know. I've never done it, so I couldn't, couldn't answer that too well. So you just cut it off above the surface, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right at ground level. Huh. Yeah. What do you do, Ed? Do you cut it above or below? Well, both. I, I can't huh. tell any difference. Oh, okay. No. So someone needs to do some experiments. Yeah. And it won't be me. Yeah. <laughs> what? Don't you like to eat asparagus? Yeah, I do. Love it, yeah. And this is a young berry. It's, um, it's one of the... Uh, Nicest berries that I like. It's a, a cross between a, uh, a blackberry and a, and a dewberry. Huh. And um, the dewberry gives you a different taste completely. But it's a huge berry full of juice and uh, very good berry. And the reason I grow these two uh, is they don't send rhizomes out to propagate new plants. Oh. Okay. And most blackberry crosses do that, and you have blackberries coming up everywhere yeah. around your yard. So these propagate by tip rooting, which uh, you can see going on right here. Oh. The tip roots. Okay. And uh, if you leave the, um, the new shoots down, it'll tip root, and you'll get new plants. So you can hmm. propagate that way. 
All right. And um, then these are, after they're fruited, you cut them all off and you wind your new ones up over there or leave them on the ground. I see. So these ones here are new shoots, you just yep. haven't wound up yet. That's right. Yeah. You should get them on a giant reel and just reel them in. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, some, of the, some of the uh, Marionberry uh, new shoots can get 30 feet long. Oh my goodness, so yeah. They can wind up pretty good. Cool, good. wonderful. Tell us about your, uh, your roses and your, your zucchinis well, here. Well, this rose I call Stolen Moments. Um, the, the name tells it all. I acquired it from somewhere else. Okay, I've got to smell it. Is it a good? It's a beauty. Oh yeah, that's lovely, and I like the different colors. Yeah. So it kind of starts orange and turns pink. And of course, uh, it's right. It's 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 uh, lowest point right now. It's it's the first flush is over, so uh, it will be getting another flush coming up ah. where you see those dark. Dark now, did leaves. you steal this from Anne? Because it kind of looks like one of hers. No. Oh, we, we won't say. No. <laughs> we won't say. Okay. Oh, there. Oh. There's one of those darn bugs right there. See? It's orange. Got him. <laughs> and we will treat him with the respect he deserves. Okay. And you got a couple of zucchinis Zucchini here? Zucchini squash, yeah, the yeah. yellow one. Great. That's just a spot where I had an extra couple of plants. So Try them in there and yeah, see if they excellent. work. Excellent. Yeah. Now you are an expert compo composter, and yes. for new gardeners, they they may not know how easy it is to produce your own soil from what you eat and scraps yes. and such. Can you please tell us about um, your secrets on on producing good compost? Yes. Uh, compost is the um, the most important part of your garden there is. It's uh, it feeds your soil. It uses all the waste from your garden to go back into feeding the soil. And the, the way to do a good compost is by using pallets that are available free anywhere around. You can get pallets. Mm -hmm. You take the boards off one side and uh, put them on the inside of the other one. Put I some see. Wire mesh throughout keep the rats out. Yeah. That's important. Yes. And to do anything in there, you just take out these pieces. These are available from Venetian blinds. Ah. The tracks for Venetian blinds. Right. So if you find some old Venetian blinds, you get the tracks for them. And then to, uh, to work in your compost, you open it up. And, ah, excellent. It's like so. And I store the leaves in here, finished compost in the center, and working compost in the far end. Ah, tell us about your working compost and what you do to it. So this is where you start your compost in this first bin here? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, I'll take these off. This is a... Um, garden refuse now from the uh, uh, broccoli plants which all chop up with the uh, with the um, hedge trimmers mm -hmm. and then it goes in here and these are all screened yep so as your moisture your your air can get in and get to working it right and then you uh, have a little item like this Yes, I got mine at Buckerfields. Beautiful. <laughs> and it goes in there and you just lift it up and gets it aerated. It moves it all around? Moves it around a little bit. Right. Yep. Awesome. And uh, And then what happens? Does this go to This this will change down into uh, into uh, a soil additive. Which you can see in here. Oh, wow. It's all ready to go into the soil. And now, how old, is, how old is this? That would be from last fall. Last fall? Yeah. Okay. And So next fall, be, that's going to look like that. That's right. <laughs> and I'll have this, the bottom half of this will be done like that this fall. Ah. So I'll have a full, full box to, Excellent. to use. Wow. You, you have to add water 
a little bit of water. You have to add water all the time. So water and aerate? And air, yeah. yeah. And the little microbes do the rest for you. Good stuff. And the little red wriggler worms, they do the rest too. Yeah. Do a good job. Awesome. Okay. So, again, the very most important thing in your garden. Yeah, no, is that's that good. Item right Because you can spend a lot of money on soil amendments and uh, topsoil and stuff when really, you know, yep. Yep. there's, there's yep. lots of ways that you can do this. I know we keep ours in a couple of garbage cans that I drilled holes in mm -hmm. and I just roll them around to mix them up with the lid on tight. And Works that well. seems to work well. And in the winter, well. I dig up a big hole in part of a couple of my garden beds, and in it goes, and it gets covered up. And Beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, there's lots yeah. of ways, but this is, this this is, is deluxe. This is probably the ultimate <laughs> one. But yeah. um, uh, there again, you could go two, bed, two boxes. Yeah. Or one box. It depends on the size of your garden. Right. And how much room you have, That's too. That's right. Yeah. Now in the autumn, when I do the beds, uh, I do them up and I uh, put the uh, put, put your these, screens uh, over top covers on them. Yeah. I do the same. I put covers on my beds in the winter so that critters in the area don't get in and mess about. That's right. Yeah. These go on each garden bed that I'm not using for the winter. Uh, and in that garden bed goes the um, compost, mm -hmm. about an inch or two of compost on each bed. And then the uh, uh, kelp, kelp right. meal, yeah. and any fertilizer that you might want to do for the winter, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, chicken manure or something like that. Uh, right. It'll break down and it'll work in the winter time. Yeah. And then uh, over top of this, I cover it over right with the lumber covers from the lumber yard, which are free. And what do those look like? They're, um, Is that like a burlap or something? I'm not sure I know what like you mean. It's like a Tyvek cover from the lumber yard. Oh, okay. The, 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 you see the lumber, the piles of lumber, they're covered in a white. Oh, it's kind of like a plastic. Like a plastic. Oh, okay. And I th see. that's covered over, and then no rain leaches anything out of your, uh, your garden. Excellent. Great. So you start two months before anybody else in the spring. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where? Okay, so this is your broccoli crop. Yes. Sprouting broccoli? Sprouting broccoli. It's the first time I tried it this year, and it's endless. Yes. Endless shoots, and it's very, very highly recommended by me. Yeah, yeah, I love mine too. I yeah. do winter sprouting broccoli, yeah. purple winter sprouting broccoli, yeah. and it just keeps going and going and going. And I make it's soup, and it's good it's it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And Easy. in in there before there was some other there was some cauliflower in here. Oh yeah, you've got cauliflower hiding it's, in there. Uh, well, it was here. I've oh cut yes. It now. It's, oh yes. It's a, it was uh, ready, and there's some Brussels sprouts in the end. Excellent. Yeah, those are looking good too. Wonderful. And all covered over, of course, with the um, Protect Net that's uh, made in Montreal. Ah. And it protects her from your white uh, butterfly, mm -hmm. which is a ca uh, cabbage moth. Cabbage they call moth. It. Yeah, those are Ed's favorite. Yeah. He has a special ritual for him, them in his <laughs> yard. <laughs> but so you keep all the the things that uh, the butterflies, those butterflies like. In this in bed, yep. yeah, very yep. smart. They, they, uh, and they, they don't seem to even want to go near it. Yeah. With they other plastic covers, they find a hole somewhere oh. and find a hole to get in. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know Anne has a problem with that because she has holes in hers and they seem to get yep. in. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what it is. I know Ed uses this too, don't you, Ed? This, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good product. Great. It's a very good product. Wonderful. Well, would you like to tell us about your espaliated apple trees over yes, here? That's what's drawing me in now, next to your three, rhubarb. Three, um, okay, there's three. Um, uh, Spartan is the, one of the most popular. Yes. Ambrosia in the center. Wow. And Jonah Gold there. Jonah Gold. Now this year they're on their rest year, uh, oh. which is very few apples. Mm. Uh, um, so th there are quite a few on the on the Spartan, but still sparse because uh, it, it's a rest year. 
And Spartans, you know, you buy them in the store and you think, okay, that's all right. But if you've never eaten one right off the tree, holy cats, exactly. what a difference. Like Very you think different. it's the best apple on the planet if you get one right off yes. the tree. And they're far yeah. larger too. Yeah. Very, very large apple. Yeah, Especially they're brilliant. Especially when you get this small dwarf one that's a spallied. Oh, yeah. It it's just adds so much more. Is this it. not a dwarf one? Or this is a dwarf. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Yeah. yeah. I'm liking this idea. I'm going to be doing this on my deck with a peach tree next year. Beautiful. Well, another thing that's been inspiring yeah. me after we've been doing these videos, you got to do these things, yeah. right? See, next year, Bill, when they, they put on a lot more apples, Will you be thinning them? Ah. Yes. Yes, you must thin them early after your June drop, which, uh, which they thin themselves normally. You still have to thin because they get so heavy. Yeah. So, so I've heavy. read so you thin to one or two per branch, something like that. Yes. Four or five inches apart. Yes. Hmm. It, it, yeah, it's a very cruel thing to do, it seems like, when you're doing it. It's hard to do. Yeah. I know we did it to our apple <laughs> tree this year. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So okay. tell us about your rhubarb. It looks very healthy. Yes, uh, uh, three varieties. One seems to do better than the others, this mm -hmm. one here especially. And uh, the one that does the best, of course, is the one from the Chosen. Oh. And... Uh, uh, I don't know the exact name of it, but the um, chosen market people out there that do oh, yeah. it, they, they grow it. Yeah. it. Yeah, and what do you do to take care of it? Uh, just a good, a good, um, good uh, uh, bunch of manure in the, in the autumn. Uh, in the autumn. So the winter rains will take it down to the roots. Okay. Other than that, uh, not too much. Just water it and pick it, yep. hey? Great. Well, I can guess what these are. I think these are my absolute favorite. Are these Fortex Filet? These are Fortex <laughs> Filet. Please tell us about your favorite beans. They're the only ones I grow now. They're, so. uh, I started growing these about 20 years ago, and I've suggested them to many other people, uh, which Lovely. Yes. Uh, they just love them. I don't think there's a person that I've introduced them to that doesn't like them. Yeah. And I think that's what impresses so me is they can get this long or longer and they do not get stringy or coarse. Exactly. So you'll have a freezer full yeah. of beans rather than having these hairy, hairy coarse beans yeah. that you can't eat if you miss them. Exactly. Yeah. They're fabulous. They're a, they're a real good bean. Yep. I've tried to get two crops this year. I, the, the second planting is up near the far oh, yeah. end. You can see it's a yeah. little different color. Yeah, good work. It's not quite but as it, far it along. It might work, but uh, we need some heat. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to get it, I think, <laughs> eventually. So you've got a great carrot bed here, and I see you've got them covered up, too, to keep those carrot rust flies and yes. whatever else out. Keeps them out. Yeah. <laughs> what kind do you grow? This is uh, one of the best carrots I've ever found uh, to, to grow, and it's called Napoli. Napoli. Yeah, uh, just like the uh, Italian city. Okay. And uh, I use them pelleted because I can put them an inch apart, uh -huh. and you save seeds by doing that, and you don't have to thin them later. Uh, which always is a sinful thing to have to do. Yeah, yeah. pull out Feels carrots terrible. and throw them away. Yeah. And they, they produce a beautiful, beautiful carrot. Yep, they look good. Yeah, and there's no problems in there. There's no bugs in there. Excellent. And do you, do you uh, leave them in the ground and, and take them out as you yes. need them in the winter? Yeah. In, in the winter, I have two beds, that bed over there and the far bed that I cover over for the winter and we'll get to them and I'll sure. show you how I do that later okay. on. But uh, the carrots go in one bed and the uh, beets go in another. Mm. They stay in the ground for the winter. So Yeah. And this is a very sweet carrot. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah. About that size. Yeah, that's good. Beautiful. All right. Would you like to tell us about uh, what you got in here? This is called Caraflex cabbage. The, uh, the main heads have already been harvested, and there is endless little shoots of new heads, as you can see. 
There's yeah. one here, one here, three or four there, yeah. two or three over here, all coming from two plants. Caraflex, beautiful cabbage. It's a pointed cabbage and very sweet, very tender. Beautiful. Lovely cabbage. Do you make sauerkraut with it or what? <laughs> no, I make uh, salad. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I just like it steamed myself. Yeah. And you can make cabbage rolls if you get a nice big leaf. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. Tell and us then uh, those there's are broccoli in there that's finished. Finished, yeah. Pretty well. That's what's nice about the sprouting yeah. broccoli. It'll keep going. I mean, these do too sometimes, but yeah, they, yeah. They, I just harvested them all this morning, so I you'll you'll get some more. Yeah, yeah get some more. And uh, tell us about your blueberries. Yeah. These are new uh, new blueberry uh, blueberry uh, plants. Uh, they're um, uh, Duke is the Duke. name of them. Very good. Yes. Variety. Yeah. And. Um, the, uh, the mesh is on there over top of the sawdust. Um, both have a reason for being there, of course. The mesh to keep cats out. Yep. And little scratcher birds. Scratcher birds? In the wintertime. The little birds that come in the winter. Oh, and like to scratch. dig up? Yes. Yeah, they're looking for bugs. Toys in the juncos. Out goes your sawdust everywhere. Oh, so I see. Very clever. They stop them from scratching. <laughs> Okay. Now the sawdust is on there for a reason. It's a mulch. It also takes the pH down to uh, help the blueberries, the pH in the soil. And by that, the, so the sawdust does a great job of both things. Mm -hmm. That's the way they like yeah. it. Very nice. Well, you've given them lots of room. I'm sure they're going to become huge once they really get established. Because yeah. you just put those in this year? This year, yes. Wow, very nice. And these beds, uh, as you see, are just new beds, and their um, uh, yellow cedar, uh, a fellow by the name of Ryan, has a little mill over on uh, Keating Crossroad by Slag Lumber, and he has a little mill behind there, and he'll cut any size that you like, and those boards will last 30 years. Wow. So, highly advisable. Wow. Ryan at the mill on Keating. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, no, they look really great. Wonderful. And uh, what is in is in here? It looks like you got some bok choy and lettuce this, happening in here. <coughs> this bed here is uh, one of the winter beds. Wow. Uh, so there's, um, right now, there's uh, Swiss chard, Queen of May oh. lettuce, radishes, green onions, and there was some spinach in there, but it bolted. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. In what little heat we've had. Mm -hmm. And these are your radishes here you just started yes. in here? Yeah. Beautiful. I love Swiss chard. It's one of my favorites. I let yes. some go to seed so it'll have a million seeds for next year. Good. Yeah, I see if you're Ed letting... If comes over here, he can get a better idea. Yeah. I'll show him how this works. Yep. And what uh, what's going on here is Queen of May lettuce and it's going to seed. I'm letting it go to seed. And that's your Queen of May lettuce there underneath. As you can see, it's a, it's a beautiful Oops. lettuce. I have very, a few of those. They're fabulous. Very tender, very yeah. sweet lettuce. Uh, and it's not available through any uh, garden center now. Oh. It's available through me if I want to I think, I think Anne has them too. I do as well. She's given me seeds and I just... Good. They're, yeah, it's really yeah. a beauty. Beautiful lettuce. Yeah. And uh, then this, this bed I used for the winter, as I was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be taking the mesh off. But in there... Along comes the plastic, the poly, and down here, and you keep that there for for the winter. Yes. And ah. If the wind blows, these little you've got it screwed down. Hanger bolts there, and. That's Put so the smart. hanger bolts on, you have a mini greenhouse that the wind isn't going to take away. Ah, 
Excellent. I love that. And uh, they're both done that way. This bed and this I bed I use that. for the winter. Wow. Terrific. So. That's a great idea. Tell us about your, your peas and your kale here. It looks very yeah, these healthy. Are, um, oh, wait a minute. Start again. Well, not only that, but that stupid white butterfly is tantalizing us. Hey, hey, do you have the you have the net? I gave you. Yeah, yeah I got a net in there. Bill doesn't need a net. He's got his hat. He's oh, you! Oh, 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 well, Ed's wicked with a net too. So oh, anyway, God, he's yeah. gone I, now. I, Go to the neighbors. I've, I've, I've broken three or four nets catching. <laughs> That's why we don't see them as often now, Ed, because it's you and Bill are I catch getting rid them of them. And I give them to the little gecko lizards. They eat them all. Oh, they love them. Yeah, <laughs> I know. You gotta love those lizards. <laughs> anyway. Okay, tell us about your peas tell and us your about the peas. Okay. Um, and your kale. <laughs> these are um, West Coast seed variety called Cascadia. Oh. It was developed for this climate, and it's one of the best uh, snap peas. That I've ever found, and I uh, I grow uh, three different plantings of these a year. Wow! So it's it's good for the warm warmth we have in the summer, plus the coolness we have here, and it does a very very good job, and it's a lovely lovely variety. Yeah, I like I like how you've got this yes. um, uh, whatever this is this. It's a, it's a little uh, uh, type of fencing that uh, yeah. you can buy at any of the garden stores or the um, uh, building stores mainly have it. And it works really good. And I used it here yeah. also for the, um, the for the cucumbers. Ah, yeah. Because my, my peas blew over because I Did bought they? this heritage brand that, were, that went so Ooh. tall, they went above what they were supposed to, and there's big wind, and over it went. So yeah. I need something sturdier, so yeah. I'll be looking for this. T-bars. Yeah. T-bars. Excellent. And, and then rail just, down there. Yeah. Uh, conduit, uh, electrical conduit railing and uh, yeah. you know, put the Because they need something, on. they need something that they can grab onto. Yes. It's not like a pole bean. You yes. can't use poles. It won't work. So. Yeah. This is the second planting. Yeah. And I'm Good work. I'm planting the third planting there. Down there. Behind me. Beautiful. Good. Tell us about your your cucumbers and then we'll move down to your tomatoes. This is the apple cucumber and oh, the lemon yeah. cucumber. They're both uh, from Australia. They're little round ones and very tasty cucumber. Uh, it's the only one I grow. Huh? I've, uh, I've, I've grown it for years and, and just love it. Uh, and people that I give it to, they, they really like it too. So mm -hmm. I keep growing it. Huh? And it'll grow up here and uh, get multi cucumbers on it. Lots. Beautiful. And are these white radishes down white here? White radishes, white icicle. Yeah, nice. Going pretty well big. Yeah, don't pull any out because I can't no. eat those. <laughs> and shall we move down to your tomatoes? Okay. Well, they're kind of um, taking a back seat. They need some heat. Yeah. <laughs> these are indeterminates. The uh, indeterminate being that you uh, take just bud the uh, suckers out of each leaf. Like this one? Leaf join. That one coming up there. You yes. Want me to take it out? Them. Yep. That's it. Yeah. So you These take those out. out. Every one. Yeah. And there's one here I'm leaving for someone that wanted it. It's going to start a tomato. Okay. Of this variety. Mm -hmm. Do now you have this, different varieties in here? This, oh, there's uh, different varieties. Eh? All different. Yeah. Okay. This one being the most talked about, it's called Ildi. And we did this on the first video seven years ago. <laughs> and people couldn't get back to Ed fast enough to find out where they could buy that tomato. Now, how do you spell that? I-L-D-I. I-L-D-I. Yeah, and, and what's special a, about it? It's an indeterminate, which means that you uh, take the suckers out. Yeah. But it produces on a stem like tomatoes. Holy doodle. Like yeah. uh, grapes. And there's 40 to 50 to 60 little yellow salad tomatoes on that stem. Wow. Yeah, it looks... It, you can see it. It's amazing. There. Yeah. And uh, I don't know whether Ed can get a picture oh, of that. Oh, he sure but, will later. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Fabulous. And what else do you have in here? There's... Um, 
Paul Robeson, which is a uh, Russian tomato, uh, heirloom. There's um, orange banana, which is a sort of a uh, this one a cooking tomato. This one, yeah. Yeah. And there again, you see there's. Yeah, the, it's really curly. It's yeah. curling up there. Yeah. And it is a long tomato, about so big and so big around, uh, orange color. Wow. Very, very attractive. So tomato. it looks like a banana pepper kind yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's called um, the Gina Lee's Golden Girl, which is a really favorite of mine. And it gives you beautiful big tomatoes. Uh, not many, but uh, enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a lovely tomato. And it's very meaty, it, which it doesn't have a lot of juice in it. So it's quite a meaty tomato. Now, do you, do you save your own seeds? You yes. must, because um, yes. otherwise you wouldn't be able to get yes. to get the yes. ildi. Am I saying that right? Yes. Ah, very good. Yes, well, Benita told us how to save uh, tomato seeds. So, yeah, uh, yeah. so I th hope more people will be doing that. I know yeah. I do. Right. Yeah. Now, what have you got in here? Well, Sorry? one other thing. I got a question. Oh, Ed's got a question. <laughs> okay. I notice you're pulling, <clears throat> excuse me, I notice you're pulling off suckers. But I also notice you're probably cutting off lower leaves as well. Yes. Uh, I oh. try to keep any water off of the plant because of late blight. Now, anytime you get water, you, tr you should never water your tomatoes from the top because uh, that creates that late blight. Uh, and it'll start any time now through to the end of the year. Even if you water in the morning, you have to worry about that? Yes. Yeah. So I always water from the bottom, and I take the bottom leaves off to keep them from getting water on them. Ah. And the, and the irrigation system itself does that for me if I'm using it. Right. So. Yeah, my leaves also turned yellow near the bottom and got, a in the greenhouse anyway, and got aphids on them. So I cut them off for that reason as exactly. well. Exactly. We had cauliflower in here, one I've tried this year from from West Coast Seeds called Marty. And it was really, truly amazing because the main heads were football size, uh, huge, beautiful white heads. Mm -hmm. And after they, I've took, taken them, uh, two more sprouts came on that one. On this one here? That one there. Yeah. Um, you can see in here, there's a head forming in there. That's yep. another sprout. Ah, I see, yeah. And I think it has another one on the other side. Yeah, there's something happening down yep. at the bottom there as well. And that's, I've never had that happen before. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, Oh yeah, I can see the head in there. The head it's head about, right down in there. It's about yep. this big, beautiful. And I just picked this one this morning. It was about that big around, a beautiful white head, enough for one, one person, Perfect. a meal. Yeah. Awesome. So Marty is the name. Like M-A-R-D-I. D-I. D -I. Oh, very yeah. good. Okay, tell us about your onions that are... Uh, start yes. again. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, tell us about your onions. You start them from seed. Yes, I start yeah. them in uh, December. Uh, mm -hmm. That way um, the, the onion culture will tell you uh, the bigger the top, the larger the bottom will be eventually. Okay. Because each one of these leaves is responsible for one ring on your onion. I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Wow. And the sooner you start them, and they go out here under cover in January, mm -hmm. uh, to get them big and, and to get them this size, you have to do that. Now, once they're in here and they're growing and they get a good size, the culture tells you come summer solstice, which was two or three weeks, a week or two ago, right. they stop growing the tops and they start growing the bottoms. Oh. And you can see by the bottoms starting to grow down here, yeah. the size of them. Are these all Kelsey's? No, these are all global. They're it's all global. New one I'm Because they're very big. That's why yeah. I thought they were a Kelsey. Uh, wow. uh, normally I grow Kelsey or Elsa Craig, which is both the sweet onion, and they get very big, and I've had good success with them. 
but I wanted to try a new kind this year, and I think it's much bigger. Oh, really? And it's called Global. And it's Global. From Vessi seeds. Vessi? Yes. Okay. And um, uh, you can see by the size of this one here, yeah. it's going to be huge. Yeah. Generally, you get seven and a half to eight pounds per onion, and that's about that size. Wow. And are they a good keeper? Not a good keeper. No. How do you no. keep your onions to I make I put them last? in an individual bag on each yeah. onion, and I hang them in the garage huh. after they've cured. So and that I cure them um, by just laying them out on a sheet in the garage, not in the hot sunshine. A lot of people put them in the hot sun, but it shouldn't shouldn't be. No, you shouldn't do that with your garlic either, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you dry uh, them out really well, and then you hang them. I know uh, Anne was saying she hangs hers upside down, so the greens are down and the bulb is up top. Do you do you no, you just I hang them up? Uh, actually, there shouldn't be any greens on them because when you uh, harvest them, uh, your tops should be all. Uh, I think that's how she dries them before she puts them away. Yeah. So you hang them you hang them up once they're once cured. Up. You you hang them yes. in bags once in the cured. garage. Ah, and that's how you store them. Yeah. Ah, very good. And then they'll last oh probably you probably get two to three months maybe a maximum. Yeah. But I have a waiting list for them that people want them. Oh. So I, I I don't have any problems. You don't have them. any. Ah, okay. <laughs> now is, this looks like a different kind. Is that a shallot or something? That's a multiplier. A multiplier. Multiplier onions, which I use over in that bed over there, the winter bed. Um, I let some get large. Yeah. Because now when these die back, the tops on these. I'll store them, and then I can have them in the spring before the ones are available in the garden centers. Ah, I and see. The multiplier is only available come late spring. So multipliers are kind of weird that they, that they grow like bulbs do? Bulb, yeah. They keep growing more bulbs? That's right. So what do you do with those? You kind of help yourself to the one you want, and then it just keeps going? You just, you just put that in the ground, and then you get six or eight little green onions from it I next see. year. I see. Ah, very to let nice. To cure like an ordinary onion for the winter. Right. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. I've never grown those before. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, that, that works real good. Great. Well, I see that you have a whole bunch of Cape gooseberries back here. Can yes. you tell us a little about those? Because, I mean, goodness, you've got four huge plants. They're yes. gorgeous. Yes. Tell us about your Cape gooseberries. I think we all have them except Ed because he doesn't eat them. <laughs> I've tried. They come up everywhere. Uh, they do, but they're so good for you, Ed. It's yeah. okay. You don't have to eat them. Please tell us about your Cape gooseberries. Well, I, uh, uh, some of these are volunteers in the garden, mm -hmm. and some I started from cuttings. So you can put them in the greenhouse for the winter and then uh, put them out in the spring. Uh, when it's warm enough, and minimum 10 gallon pots because the root system on this plant is so huge, it just it takes over. It just takes over. I everything. mean, you can see you can see on the top that there's yeah. all it's all fibrous yeah. roots all over. But that contains the plant enough to keep it small enough yeah. to be manageable. Now, do you how uh, how how uh, how often do you change your plants? Like, how how old is this plant? This is uh, this year's. This is this year's. Yeah, this uh, from the winter time. Through, uh, okay, from, for from, one that you took a cutting of and you wintered, yeah, and then in it's in the greenhouse. We can see them. Right. There. We'll have a look at them. I'll so you, you you tend to start over winter a start. Yeah. And then that's the one that fruits for you. Yes. And then you just continue that process, so you don't keep these plants. No. No. Ah, that's smart because otherwise you got to try and move this. That's what I oh, do. Yeah, you, I can't do it anymore. I think I'm going to do you, the you need a, cuttings. You need a big greenhouse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But, awesome. Uh, uh, you can see them in here. Yep. If Ed Want wants to, to get up. Can I open one up? Yep. There These are. are just the most delightful thing. Ed, I know you don't like them, and I hated them at first, too, but Anne said, Jenny, you have to have one of these, and then I, they grew on me. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, from that little berry, you can get all kinds of tropical fruit flavors. It's fabulous. Well, 
Um, they're very decorative, so too. So many, and they're high in uh, vitamins. Yes, and they have some trace elements that are hard to find in other things. Exactly. So they're really good. The Incas gave us these. They did? Thank the you, Incas. Incas. Gave us these. Yeah, <laughs> they're beautiful, along with so many other things. Yeah, wonderful. And um, the, um, they, they, uh, they, they're not fussy on soil, so you, can, you don't have to really feed them or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, they just uh, on ordinary soil, but they take lots of water. They do. All kinds of water. They do take a lot and, of water, uh, that's true. What I do with them, I pick them all as they come ripe, put them in the freezer in a, in a box, and then in the, in the uh, spring, late winter and spring, when there's no other fruit around, I'll take them out and have some, or I'll make jam with them. And the jam is, is so wonderful and so tasty. I never make it to jam. We just <laughs> gobble them up. <laughs> Beautiful. Lovely. They're lovely plants. They are. Would yeah. you like to show us your greenhouse where you start everything? Yes. These Brother. are the uh, small uh, uh, golden berries or Cape gooseberries. Uh, where they're milled over winter, and then I'll put them in big pots for the uh, summer. Excellent. And uh, do it. And then, of course, uh, all the uh, paraphernalia to yeah, the uh, heat, uh, blue lights, and... heat mats, and everything mm -hmm. for, for starting seeds. Yeah, it's a and, it's a small greenhouse, but you sure do a lot yeah, in here. Do yeah. a lot in here. Yes. Yeah, good for yeah. you. And you you tend to uh, eat most of what you produce. Is yes. that right? You don't go to the grow. I don't see you very often in the co-op. It's <laughs> no. probably why you're such a healthy guy. No, I. Uh, <laughs> I basically um, uh, have something, like maybe a couple of eggs or something, and, and then the rest is all just go to the From garden and get what you want. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Lucky no, you. I'm very healthy. Uh, I'm 87 years old. And My I'm, goodness. And um, just love the garden. You're doing a great job. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Bill, for showing us your garden today. It was a real it's treat. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Mm -hmm.